Welcome to VTU eShikshana program. I am Professor Prakash K.R. from the National Institute of Engineering, Mysuru. In the last class, I was discussing about uh, sequencing of cylinders in that cascading method. So the cascading method is a very important method as that can give a reliable solution to the industry for a uh, for any automation circuit. In this, we are trying to avoid the overlapping signals by using cascade lines and which I have told you with an example A plus, B plus, A minus, B minus as one example. And also I have said everything about how we can select the number of valves and number of uh, header lines and all those formulas which are being thumb as a, used as a thumb rule uh, to take up cascading uh, circuit design parts. And in this class, I will talk about little bit of conditions which are to be brushed, which are to be known uh, before we move on to the other circuits. So with this, I will be talking about conditions of the cascading for cascading. So, uh, you can just list out these conditions. The number of signal inputs uh, must be equal to the number of output signals. This is the first step. And next is each input signal is assigned to a particular output signal. And it should be possible to store an output signal even when the corresponding input signal is no longer present. That means as you are using memory signals here only one output signal may exist at any one point. So, this is important. So, this is important. Only one output, only one output signal may exist at any one point or it must be possible to eliminate any specific output signal. So, this is your point number 3. Point 4 is the input signal should be effective in the same required sequence. So, the sequence that at which we are planning to execute in the same sequence input signal should be effective. So, we should get okay. and the number of reversing valves required is n minus 1. So, where n is the total number of signals from the limit switches or the signal groups. You can also take a signal group. I said how to create a signal group. No simultaneous uh, signals from a single cylinder should come. So, that I have told you. So, once you make such groups, so depending upon the groups, you can take your number of reversing valves also. So, uh, these are the steps that you have to know before you create and uh, reversing valves. So, that is your 5 by 2 or 4 by 2 way valves that you use to reverse the supply to the header line. And these are signal processing valves which are used to change over. We call this as a change over from one line to another line. Signal change over from one line to another line. Depending upon the presence of set and reset at the reversing valves. So, we are changing the output change over takes place from port 4 to port 2 of the valves. And there is no need to examine the steps, exact steps where the signal overlap can occur or occur in the circuit because we, because we are separating these signals. So, no need to worry about or check about. So, just follow these methods and distribute this as per the steps what we have discussed and you are through with the circuit. But you have to know the thumb rule of design and you have to group them in proper method and select the valves in proper method and appropriately you have to fix the valves in the desired signal flow manner required. So, if you do that much, you are ensured with your exact function without any signal overlap. This is what the cascading method tells us with confidence. Let me take an another example. Why I am repeating with one more case is, you should be uh, aware of such uh, experimentation. So, if you take an example of A plus B plus B minus A minus as a case. Okay? So, here 
if you observe this, see this, this is a sequence where B plus and B minus, there will be signal overlap in this case, so which can be avoided by using any method, but I am discussing here about the cascading method. So, in the cascading method, we have to start with uh, cylinder sequence. So, you have to group them in group the signals. So, that is A plus, B plus, A minus, B minus. Now, we are grouping them like this. This is one group because same cylinder should not appear. Cylinder A is there, then A should not come. So, B has come. So, B is there, B should not come. So, we have brought in A there. So, we have grouped in the manner which I have told. So, now once you group this, signal sequences related to this cylinders. So, signal sequences related to this is A1 and this related to this is B1. That is as per your sequence. So, required for this conditions. So, for this B0 and for this it is A0. So, you have to, you are grouping the cylinders first and then you are taking those respective sequence sig signals in the group and then once you know the group, number of groups is 2, take the number of lines S1 and S2, 2 lines. So, this is how the header lines are being choosed. I am repeating this example because I am making you to recall the steps that I have told in the step 1 of cascading methods. In the step 1, what it says is, whatever the sequence you have to generate, write that and check that whether the signal overlap occurs and then start grouping them. But in the grouping, there is a rule. Uh, in, in grouping, no two cylinder, uh, cylinders should come, uh, two, two of the same cylinders should come. So, I am grouping that way A and then B, B and then A. So, put them in brackets. So, finished and then take the respective signals of that, sequence signals of that, okay. So, that is limit switch signals A1, B1, B1, B0, A0. Group them respectively and now you know there are two groups create your two headers S1 and S2. Yeah, this is how you have to go in steps. So, I am just taking that as a common example, I have created my two headers. So, I have created my two headers here. So, this is one and this is the second one. So, there are two. This is what I wanted to convey you. So, so two headers we have created. So, now, as per the requirement, number of walls and other things you have to take, na? that is already been discussed. So, two walls here and two walls here. So, this is for switching the uh, header supply. So, we have taken 2, 1 plus 1 and this is your starting condition, this is your starting condition and here uh, this is your uh, roller limit switch and this is your roller limit switch to the other side. Then connect the S2, S2, so this one, S2 to this side, okay, and here also we have connected to this side, S2. S1 is connected to this, okay, this side. So, all the steps what I have said has been followed in construction of this. So, uh, once you complete this, you can start operating when you press this, when you press this, that is manually when you press this start button, start PB, the signal will get closed here, one gets connected to two here and you get a supply to this. So, 1.0, so that is, uh, that is uh, your wall this. Okay, 1.0, okay, where is 1.0, yeah, that is it, okay. So, that will create uh, this A plus first, so A plus first, okay. When you do A plus, this will hit this one, that is your uh, 
check the wall now. So this one, okay. A1, where is A1 now? Just check the corresponding uh, wall of A1, okay. So signals here, you you can cross verify back here, and as you follow, you understand that you are achieving your sequence that is desired. So this is how you can repeat any number of cases that you want. I have already said one. So like this, you can take any configuration. I am just telling the steps to ensure. And now if I take one more example also, I have the same steps I follow. Grouping of signals, the sequence required is A plus, A minus, B plus, B minus. So again, there are two cylinders in this case. So Definitely there is a signal overlapping, so cascading method is most suitable. So take that, take the cylinder sequencing. So as he says, you cannot group uh, in the two cylinders at one time. So you are coming with this and this, so not possible. So the only one will come here now in this case as one group. So see how easily you can understand. So no two cylinders can come, uh, okay. Uh, same cylinders can come in one group. So when I start from left side, when I start from left side, here the sequence is A plus A minus B plus B minus. So A, then again A, not possible. So as I said, it is not possible. So how, what is the next method? So group this first, one element only. A plus is one group now. A plus is one group. And then we are coming here. So this two, yeah, you can club now, you can club. So because this is A and this is B, they are different cylinders. Yes, it is possible, you can club. So club and your second group will be this, second group will be this. And the left out is B. Anyway, we cannot group this two, na? so this is not possible. So already we are moving from this side to this side. So as we go, we have already done two and the last remaining is B minus. So this is uh, B minus is in the third group. So in this case, not the two group, there are three groups. There are three groups. So what are these three groups? You have understood. One, two, three with three brackets. So and corresponding sequencing signals are signal sequencing points of that. A1 is for the first one. Here A naught B1 is in one group and B naught is in the third group. So now I have arrived at this grouping technique and sequencing of groups also, signals also, grouping signals also and then I move on to my headers. So the number of headers required is number of groups. So number of groups is 3, so I need a S1, S2, S3, very simple, very simple. So, you have to just blindly follow those uh, 5 to 6 steps I have explained and you can easily solve cascading problems without any difficulty but make practice of this uh, one or two times so you get adjusted to the grouping, grouping and then you can go ahead with the sequencing. So I will be just taking forward so you can just create your circuit as I said if you observe this. There are three lines, I should get S1, S2, S3 and uh, grouping is already done, sequencing okay, elements. So in the second group is charged with this, so you can just group this. When S2 is charged, this will happen. When S3 is charged, this should happen. When S1 is charged, this should happen. So we are grouping this and putting it under one header. So easy technique, so easy technique. So with this, uh, I can create my circuits. I have taken three lines. So the one line here, observe this, one line, second line looks complex, but uh, do not worry. If you start practicing, it will become easy. And as I said, the number of cylinders are two, number of elements that you are taking it as per this group, under one header, this is the elements that you, you have to get according to the sequence. You arrange them 
arrange them under the header conditions. So, you are, you are going to get one here and one here. So, distribution, they get distributed according to their requirement and once you achieve this, doing this, you are through. If you do this, I will assure you, I will get you an automation engineering jobs in the company. You say you know all this and along with this, if you understand electro-pneumatic to an extent, you are ready to work in the industry, you are a ready engineer to one level. A hardly 10-15 days of training to you will enable you to design. So, because many SPM machine builders, many machine tool builders, they are in need of design people, those who know uh, a complete design aspects along with uh, low cost automation and as well as electrical integrated automation systems. So, and if you are good up to one level, they can train you and use you and also as a student to get more hold on these things. I will suggest you one good thing. There is a software called Automation Studio, which is a, 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 a software which is paid version only, but uh, students are allowed to download it for a 29 or 30 days without charge. The company offers you a student version of 29 days. If you download that, you can practice few complex circuits like this and once you work with the software, you are well aware of the techniques of grouping and other things. I will also show you automation studio in one of the video in my last session. So, you can work with that or you can also say take softwares like uh, fluid, fluid sim, so sim center, fluid sim, so all these kinds of softwares which enables you to learn this to the depth. So, if you are not working with the software, the today the people are simulated era, it is a simulated more AI, more simulation, more things are work done soft and then once the proof of concept is reached, they take to the spot to reduce the time. So, you should also equip in the same manner to get a job, otherwise there is no difference between you and a diploma guy, this is what I sh should say. So, you are an engineer means your elevation has to happen in terms of the depth level. So, use the softwares which I am telling. One is automation studio, fluid sim. I am repeating this because you have to download this after my session. So, this is what my intention. Okay? So, use all those things and learn uh, these complex circuits design and once you know this, you will be ready for the industry. We have discussed now uh, uh, pneumatic part. The next I will continue with electro pneumatic. Uh, even though you are mechanical students, it is necessary to learn interdisciplinary knowledge. Uh, in the present uh, requirements of industry, because the world is now more moving towards mechatronics. Mechatronics means mechanical, electrical, electronics are coming together. You take any system of the day, most of the systems are devices coming with the concept of mechatronics. So, that means, even though you have joined a mechanical engineering, you are uh, required to learn the other areas also. So, that is the reason electro pneumatic learnings is most important thing for all of you. I will just give you slowly, little slowly and uh, with the confidence that you all can learn easily. Nothing is uh, bigger in this. Electrical things are much easier to learn compared to what we have seen in our last classes. So, here you need to know some of the elements of the electrical elements and then understand how they work 
and interface them along with our components uh, so that the things will move from conventional pneumatics to an electro pneumatics. So, I uh, will be taking electro pneumatics part. So, electro pneumatic controls integrates integrates pneumatics with electricals technology. As I said, this integrates a mechanical pneumatic thing to an electrical thing. So, it is increasing the use of electrical in automation, in automation process. So, thereby we are trying to target larger application areas. So, in electro pneumatics, when I say electro pneumatics, electrical is there here. So, when we say electrical is there, electrical signal should be there to operate the valves. So, when we say signals, there are two types of signals AC and DC source are being used to give a AC signals and DC signals. So, power source may be an AC or a DC supply. So, working medium is compressed air here also. The element which is giving you an output uh, motion is air, but the operation of those pneumatic cylinders are done through an electrical means by an electrical signals. So, the signaling elements are of electrical nature. Okay. So, operating voltage may vary here from 12 volt to 220 volt. Normally, we use 24 volts today because uh, 24 volts is safer, does not give any shock and other things. Operator safety is more important. So, now we are using a 24 volts DC supply as one of the major source of signals in many electron pneumatic applications. So, final control elements are activated by a one word element called selenoid actuation. Selenoid actuation. So, you need to understand what is selenoid actuation. Before that, you need to understand what is a selenoid. Selenoid is a, a control of valve that is opening and closing of the valve with the help of an electrical signal. So, when you give a power, the power will induce us uh, some force in the valve which is being to pull or push so that the valve operates due to the electromagnetic induction force that has been created. So, we are energizing the valve and de-energizing the valve and giving a, creating a force to open and close with the help of that electrical energy and the induced force due to that. So, such valves which operates through electrical signals by the method of induction we call them as selenoid valves. Means, when you give a current the electromagnetic induction will happen that lifts the valve. So, valve gets open. So, you de-energize that gets closed. So, if it is a spool type of valve on the both sides, on the both sides we can have a selenoid valves. So, when you energize this side, the spool is pulled this side. So, after pulling the spool, uh, you are connecting some ports of the valve so that you get the appropriate flow. I will put a video clip in my next class to tell you how the valve will get pulled by a selenoid configuration. So, how the selenoid operation valves will work. So, uh, and the resetting of the valves is done by a springs in some cases. So, spring reset type we call or we can use an another selenoid on the other side. So, this side selenoid and this side selenoid this is also possibility. If you do not want both the sides selenoid, so one side selenoid, another side spring can do that. 
spring return time. So, this is how we can take a configuration of uh, pneumatics and marry the pneumatic with electrical so that electro pneumatic becomes a one more area which can enhance your applications for a different areas and which can be used in different areas. Why only that? There is no limitation to it. If you move one step up, so you can also move to a, a logical control level achieved using a one more device called programmable logical controllers. We also in short we call them as PLC. So, if you take the industry now, there are many, many PLC players who are uh, putting up their embedded device, it is an embedded device in the market and uh, they are used to generate your logical circuits designed in the software and able to run through. So, what is the advantage sir? If you ask, if you come to this level, you can replace many hard relays which are there in the circuits. If you use a PLC, PLC is nothing but a relay replacer. So, let me talk about relay. What is a relay? Relay is an electromagnetic switch. When I say an electromagnetic switch, how it different from the conventional switch? So, take a conventional switch like your home switches or push button type of switches. What we are trying to do here is, we are switching the switch and when we switch it, the power supply goes to the output device. So, means we are pressing it, we are pressing it to give an output. So, even in the push button, we are pressing the push button that is spring gets compressed and the contacts get connects and the supply goes forward. So, that means that means you are using this, but as you give these kinds of switches, it will become more difficult to automate the process. So, the first element which has come to the automation help was a relay. Relay is a magic device which can help you to design circuits and do an interlocking operations latching operations, I will tell you what is latching, what is interlocking, all these concepts now. So, in the coming uh, uh, lecture sessions, so all these were made allowed using the use of relay. So, relay is an electromagnetic switch which can be used in different applications such as switching from a remote supply and next is it can be used in creating holding circuits, it can be used in creating your interlocking circuits. So, uh, there is a, a enhanced features which can be created with all these kinds of things. So, uh, after understanding the relay, however, we were using a relay which is an hard wear device. As you operate in the industry, there can be a n number of cycles that you operate in a six months or one year line. So, because of the nature of the mechanical contacts that happens, hardware elements gets happen, the wear and tear of the relay switches will happen, the weakening of the coils of the solenoids will happen. This may result in uh, problems in the machine panels. So, that has created a nightmare to the industry, fault finding was very difficult. Then they decided we want a, a newer devices, newer technology. Then the invention of PLC has come. PLC has replaced the relays. So, avoiding the uh, many relays of hardware elements using in the circuit. So, once after that also it has enabled to know 
uh, the advantage is knowing the fault where it is happening because it can be simulated in a software manner. So, your software is showing the result and your hardware elements are behaving in the same way. So, if some gaps are there, some faults are there, we can know here also when it is in the simulated conditions. So, PLC is a relay replacer, an embedded device brought to replace the relays to reduce all these difficulties in the complex industry situations. So, now uh, we can use when we say electro pneumatic, it can move on to PLC pneumatics also, but in your syllabus we are restricting it to electro pneumatic. So, that means we may use a relays and then we may give you an introduction to PLC that is it. Okay? So, with that we will be able to take you through all the other interdisciplinary learning areas now, which is very important for you. So, in total a programmable logical controller can be conveniently used to obtain your outputs as per the logics that you ask and with a time delay or with a sequence that you want you are observing what is the complexity that was there in designing sequential circuits. Now, as we come across, now the softwares are pitching in for you to help you. So, you can do all these things in the PLC softwares and then you can directly rig up as per the design that you have done and get your final outputs achieved. Finally, the output signals are supplied to a Solenoid valves in the final control elements, that final control valves through the PLC and some devices which are being used. And the greatest advantage, this is, see this electron pneumatics is the integration, is the integration of pneumatics with electro and and then with a PLC and then with a PLC. This is electronic, this is an embedded device. Okay? So, means we are moving from stage to stage, mechanical to electrical, electrical to electron, like that we are moving. Okay? All together integrated is mechatronics now. So, people with mechatronics knowledge will have a huge scope in the industry today. So, you say, I know pneumatics, I know electrical design little bit of and then I also know the PLC. If you go beyond this CADA and other DCS and other thing, your job is assured, your job is assured. When you start learning itself, you can book your ticket to an industry. So, that is how you have to move and the advantages I am telling in a repetitive uh, way as you integrated you will become a mechatronics engineer. A mechatronics is engineer has a mechanical knowledge, electrical knowledge, electronics knowledge. So, if you move one step up you can also learn some robotics knowledge. So, that is how the, the higher verticals can be taken and assuring your ticket for an industry. So, as the signal speeds are good, much higher with the use of PLCs, you can make automation process more faster and uh, cycle time reductions can be done and uh, you can do a complex designs using this techniques with uh, your software integration and uh, uh, electron pneumatic controls and PLC can be incorporated. So, there can be few steps in incorporation. The first step is signal input devices that is signal generation such as switches and contactors or relays and other things and various types of contact and proximity sensors has to be understood by you. And second step is signal processing. Here, use of combination of contactors or relays and 
using a PLC to activate such, get such signals using PLC logics should be understood. And then finally, in step 3, all input is known to you and then output side, outputs obtained after the processing are used to activate the solenoids or your buzzers or your uh, LEDs and other elements has to be understood as an output element. So, you know input, input logical controls, you know output, output processing status and you know mechanical uh, along with conventional pneumatic element. So, learning these ways you can definitely make yourselves more stronger, but before we start electro pneumatics, the one important thing you should understand is some symbolic representation that we make. Like in the beginning when we started pneumatic, we have showed you some symbols of different valves which are used in pneumatics and valve configurations, the port numbers, supply port, working port and exhaust ports. Like that, here also in electrical, you should know different symbols and also you should know different uh, method, method of representing normally open, normally closed conditions within the symbols. So, let me take now few such uh, symbols for you before we start electro pneumatics uh, theory part of it in the circuit level. So, normally open contacts are represented like this and normally closed contacts are represented like this. Change over contact is shown like this, you, you can change from one to another, NO to NC, then that is represented like this. Two way normal open switches with three positions is represented like this. And switch with normally open contact not automatically reset. So, to set and reset you have to do it manual. So, switch with normally closed contact, this is normally open contact was there, it is open here, it is closed here with uh, not automatically reset kind of things. So, means toggle kind of thing. So, uh, symbolic representation of all this and then you have to know about mechanically linked contacts, means you pull this. So, some elements get actuated and gets closed. So, all of them will become closed when you pull this element. So, how do you pull? You can pull by mechanically or you can use a relay technique by induction uh, coil, you can pull this all together at once. So, then it will become relay kind of thing. So, you can pull by mechanical means, all the switches can be made active at one time by some means and normally open contacts actuated type. So, is been shown like this. So, few such simple symbols has to be understood, understood by you and also you should practice of writing this on the paper level. So, then only you will be ready slowly towards electro electro pneumatic sessions. Push button switch with normally open type. So, means when you press this, when you press this push button, push, push this, when you push this, this gets closed. So, normally push button type of normally open type of thing that has been showed here with uh, manually actuated uh, kind and this is manual actuated pressing conditions. So, switching with normally open contact manually activated by pulling. Why only push? You can also make pulling as one of the methodology to close and open the switch. So, you can either use a pulling technique or a pushing technique. So, pushing technique to open and close the element. So, this is normally open contact manually actuated by rotating. So, you can turn this. There are many ways to 
open and close your contact elements, switches. So that has been clear. And also, as you move ahead, we are trying to now integrate electrical aspects in the mechanical pneumatic valves. So that means, you will come across with some valves. So the valves are, now here we have shown you three port. So one, two, three. So three by two. What is this two? Zero and one. There are two positions, two boxes. So, 3 by 2 valve, this is 3 by 2 valve, but, but here we have used the pneumatic solenoid. Solenoid operation is shown by this. When I say solenoid, so here some other elements, see this is pilot assisted, means pneumatic assisted. And one more thing is there, this resetter, manual resetters. So, means the today's valves are built with in combination with pneumatics, with electricals and manual resetting with spring position, reset positions. Spring is used to retract this. So, you can get two functions out of it. So, one may be forward and another one may be retraction. Similarly, in the second symbol now, we have taken 5 by 2 way valve. This is a 3 by 2 way. Now, here we have taken a 5 by 2 way. What is 5? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 ports in it. 2 position that is 0 and 1. There are 2 boxes which is actuated by a pneumatic solenoid valve, pilot assisted by air and manual reset with spring. So, in this fashion, there are many valves in combinations are developed for the purpose of the automation. So, and this is the way these valves will become our future valves to work with electro pneumatics circuits. So, with this, I will assure you job. Why should you worry? So, at this point in this slide I conclude we have designed we have designed the sessions with now uh, various uh, circuits starting from I will recall my uh, circuits which we have taken from the beginning from unit 4 uh, also we have taken direct indirect circuit flow control incorporated circuit to change the speeds of the cylinder and then we have moved on to logical circuits of creating using AND and R valves, not valves in the circuits to create logical operations as per the automation needs. And then slowly we have moved on to a sequencing of cylinders wherein more than one cylinder sequencing uh, uh, applications are being uh, derived and uh, taken as examples. And uh, now in the last time, I have touched upon signal overlapping and elimination of signal overlapping, techniques to eliminate signal overlapping, pressure dependent and temperature dependent, time dependent uh, circuits and uh, at the end uh, cascading technique as it is more reliable method for any pneumatic circuit design in the automation segment. So, uh, the conclusion is uh, cascading method is a very fantastic method. Elect, uh, we can uh, use this and uh, later, which is uh, can be although electro pneumatics is widely used in many today's contests because as the interdisciplinary branches have pushed in their strength and uh, jumping into our area of Royal Mac. So, they are also bringing in with electro pneumatic and they are forcing. It is similar to like conventional automobile, now we are moving on to EV vehicles. So, other branches are trying to push you out of the race. So, but I should say 
the hydraulics and pneumatics is one technology with a mechanical domain which can survive forever and even though electro pneumatics has proved to be entering in different applications cascading uh, method proves to be much reliable and compared to even electro pneumatics in some cases so and in many cases we we cannot even electricals were in hazardous areas mines and other areas so there it proves to be purely automation with pneumatics and in that critical hazardous areas also achieving achieving complete automation with low cost automation technology becomes one of the prominent area where we can lead ourselves as a uh, uh, taking the concepts of pneumatics so uh, with this i will uh, stop my session uh, for the day